So your likes, dislikes at the heart level, you hold it in your heart. Many times life might, might want to make you settle, right? You have to decide in your heart, right? You know, when people say compromise, there are many stories. People say compromise. Hmm. There are many things I don't compromise on. You're not supposed to compromise on everything. Compromise is give a little away. No. And I'm joking, right? Just to joke, right? I remember there was a time, there was a day, my husband said, what do you want for lunch? Okay? I'm, I'm being funny now, so let's lighten the mood. And if you ask me what I want, because I am somebody, I don't cut down my desire. Listen, I will spread it out. So here I am, I started listing what I want. This, then this, they had this, and they had, ah, and it was like, ah, I said, wait, 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 wait. Do you, are you ready to take, if you want to give me what I want, do I, I'm not going to reduce. I, at least I want what I want and give me what I want. Don't give me any other thing less than what I want. If I don't finish it, let that be my decision. <laughs> you see, if you don't learn how to be powerful like that, when it is time to ask for a job, to ask for a raise, to ask for assignments, to ask for things greater, that your heart likes to enjoy. A mind that is not coming along on that journey will start telling you, ah, your own is too much. It will start trying to negotiate down. If you don't train your mind, the mind can negotiate your will down. That's the inner battle. You have to train your mind to a level with this understanding, with this knowledge that listen, this mind, I do not answer to you. You answer to me. I'm the boss. You are not the boss. Remember I talked about maturity. Spiritual maturity, emotional maturity. That is the only way you can take yourself to the height where you become in charge and you start giving instructions to your mind on what it should perform and do for you and not the other way around. Many people have been caged with a mind that is stronger than their spiritual, right? If your mind has matured, is well studied, you have PhD, you have this, you are so smart intellectually, but you are spiritually immature, emotionally immature, that mind can be the biggest weapon against your destiny. This is so important. Intellectual maturity is tied to performance in real world it knows your past it has abilities but it doesn't know your future and it's not supposed to dictate your future so let's say you went to school to become a lawyer to become a doctor you are intellectually smart in that realm but god is calling you to another assignment and your heart is saying we need to reroute you see that intellectually smart mind that has invested years can be the reason People never listen to the new direction God is giving them. Because you've invested so many years into this relationship. Now you are holding on tight. The mind is saying, this is it. And God is saying, no, it's not. And the mind is saying, but, 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 this guy is nice. The guy is this. The guy is this. Is this, is this. Arguing for you to settle. Right? But if you don't gain spiritual maturity, emotional maturity, you can't, you're not equipped to fight that battle with your mind because the mind is very strong. You see, the mind is programmed to manifest belief. So if you don't go back to your heart and start investing in your heart, emotional strength, emotional strength, spiritual, but because the spiritual capacity and maturity is the only way you can win and be in charge of your mind. Right? Because if you have not matured, yes, your mind will tell you who to be, what you can do. It will rule the game and rule the house. And that's why many people get stuck in the past because the mind knows how you got here, but it doesn't know where God is trying to take you. The only way, this is why we talk about spiritual awakening, 
is that only the spiritual side of you, it has to grow up enough to muster in the force and the power to write a new reality, to train the mind, to perform in higher dimensions than where you are today. Your mind must go to the heights of success God is giving you. And when the body says yes and no and submits it, God has to decide, did you act in accordance to my will or not? So in the spiritual frequency side, there's a reward. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. If you are willing, your, the will of your heart is in tune with what God wants you to do. And you are obedient. Obedience comes from the mind. You've trained your mind to make sure it does things in accordance to God's will. Trust me, this is the training of the mind because an untrained mind, an undisciplined mind will be unruly. You say whatever it wants to say, think whatever it wants to say, do whatever it's so it's like driving a car and the car is just like, you're trying to bring your car back. It's like, so this is where discipline, self-discipline comes in. Is that if you're willing, your heart is open to what God is telling you to do. You've said yes to God in your heart and you've trained your mind. Okay. If you are willing and obedient, then you will eat the food, good of the land. That's when God's reward shows up. You see, that's what I'm saying. That is when God's reward shows up. You are willing. I'm repeating this again, because if you master it, you understand. Your will comes from your heart. Obedience comes from the mind and the body. And based on your actions, the thoughts of your heart, the vibrations of your heart, your behavior, God will reward you based on that. So in the spirits, there is a reward for doing the will of God. If God says, do this, and you do it, but there's a lot of work you have to go in through to be willing and to obey, you have to bring your mind. That's why God will say this, if your mind is still arguing, hey, but, 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 who are you going to obey? Your mind or oh God? That's the assignment of the believer. Okay? When I say unlock your power to prosper, trust me. Prosperity has strategy. It has processes. If you fail to obey and you're doing it your own way, you get what you get. You will get your the reward for yourself. That's why obedience. If God says, I'm taking you from Egypt to the promised land, you cannot go your own way. Because remember, Moses, God already gave Moses a direction. There is always a direction. There's always a guide when God is sending you. But most people, they will hear God's word and they just go off trying to do it in their own way, in their own strength, in their own capacity versus staying in tune to ask for who are my coaches? Who are my mentors? Who are my helpers? Where's my guide? Where's my instruction? Who are my teachers? There's obedience to make sure your mind has to be trained. And God knows you have to train your mind because your mind knows your past. It doesn't know the way of the future, <laughs> but it can be trained. If you are a doctor and God is trying to make you a lawyer, you now have to train your mind how to understand the law. So many people want to use the doctor mind to perform law. It doesn't work. So most of the time you have to go through a process. I want you to say a process, okay? Is that the mind has to go through a process that teaches it, trains it to perform at the heights, the new heights of success. So even part of manifesting prosperity is training. You can be in Egypt, like in the Bible, but there has to be obedience. If the, if the leader, if Moses says, let's go, and you're not going, when the tent is being packed, you are, these are abandoned, pro like people stay behind when they are not following the direction of God. So watch out for that. Everything is connected. So let's go. I want to move faster a little bit now. Let's go now into the heart because once the spirit, once, once God rewards you, your heart will be at peace. Okay. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives. The spirit then encourages you with its own reward. Great friendships, the right relationship, the right customers, the right clients. Only God can do those things. 
you can't control <laughs> the market, you can't control demand and supply, but you can control your obedience. Okay. At the heart level now, number three. So I'm going to go quickly, number three and number five. At the heart is desires and longing. Likes, dislikes, preferences. You see, desire and longing is deeper. And desires and longing oftentimes come from a deep place of fellowship with God. There are many desires that really, you don't even know how they got there. <laughs> right? God wills you to will his will. There are some depths of desire that God knows. And in fact, the more challenging your transformation, the stronger your desire has to be. Because without strong desire, people, people don't pay the sacrifice. They don't pay the price of success. Desire is what sets the top most successful people, right? Okay? Desire is what sets them apart from most people. Because desire will be translated to passion. You see somebody, oh, this person is passionate. You're seeing them passionately pursue because in the mind, when you said desire, like, give me this or not, like, in, listen, my life is depending on this to be number one. If you're an Olympian, anybody that attains the heights of success, it's not a like or dislike. It is deep desire and passion that gets people to be champions. Champions are better in the place of desire and passion. Your prayer will be different. Likes and likes, likes versus desire. Oh, do you want spaghetti? Mm, I want burger. You can, you can change your mind. It's surface. But you see desire, you want to carry the crown. You want to win. You want promotion. You want success. You want to attain the heights of success. It's not likes or dislike. Because if it's like or dislike, you can change your mind in a minute. Desire is where you dig in. You dig in. And you say, this is it. Until I get it, no stopping. And it's a conversation between the heart and the mind. You say to your mind, don't come to me with anything less than my desires. When you see yourself holding the crown, holding the winning prize, graduating from your class, being promoted, building your business, getting married, getting the car, building your house, when you see it and you hold it in your heart and you say, this must happen for me. This must happen for me. When you insist, you see, heaven will back you. Many people don't get to that level. They stay in the, on the fence. This is when you dig in and you insist. This is when you take authority that there's nothing... Nothing less than this. Right? This is when you settle things in your heart. And you go and sleep at night. <laughs> you don't worry anymore. Because it is done and finished. At the spiritual dimension. God will not cut down the desires of the righteous. Desire is a stronger force. That when you spend all you have. The spirit God himself. We will not let, we will back you up with more energy. Because when you spend yourself, God will give you more energy. You spend yourself, God will give you. That's why it's, this is when you get into the abundance, unlimited side of the divine nature. When you know, don't tell me you don't have bank account money. Don't tell me anything about the physical. This is when you tap into the realm of impossibilities. It's not likes dislike <laughs> because like dislike because I like this cup I don't like. I like this shoe I don't like this shoe. When you start dealing with the affairs of heaven for your life, this is the realm. Nothing shall be impossible to them that believe. You whatever your desires are. Aha! Uh -huh. That's when you start asking, right? You ask and receive. You seek and you find. You knock. And the door will be open. Only people who have desire will ask, will seek, and will find. Will be pursuing. People's pursuits is like, ah passion. Their mind already understands the assignment. There ain't no stopping. There ain't no looking back. 
There ain't no negotiation. There is no limitation. There is no fear. There is no this. I cannot go back to the heart and be telling the heart this or that or that. No excuses. Give me <laughs> this. And the only way you can get to that realm is that at the spiritual dimension level, you've already seen yourself become the person God told you you are going to become. It is already done and settled. And so manifestation is just the journey you are on. And so at that level is where you get into magnetism because your mind and God will conspire to give you everything you need to manifest heights of success. And those things, they are lasting impact in your life. They are legacy building. They are success. This is what determines who gets to the heights of success. What gets you to the heights of success is not all likes and dislikes. It's not all this small dimensional. Oh, if they give me, they will. If God helps me, he will. If God wills, because I will. I will. I will that you prosper. I'm being good. Health. I will that, yes, all things are yours. Ask me the nations of your for your inheritance, right? But what are you asking for? And are you also willing to pay the price? Because everyone will back you, it will not force you. Everyone will support you, it will not drag you. Everyone will show you, it will not insist. Because this is your own journey. Many people don't get there. You don't get there. Oh, if God gives me, fine. No, that's not how you get, you, you, you go into PhD and you want to be graduated. <laughs> no, you don't stroll into those dimensions of the height of success. You don't stroll in and stroll out. You wrestle, you, you submit yourself, you, you train your mind, you persist, you resist, you pursue. That's the only way you get the best things in life. You can settle wherever you settle, you settle. So when people are getting PhD, they're building multi-million dollar businesses. They're becoming billionaires. They're gaining the, the richness of life. I'm trying to share to you, everybody you see carrying a crown and a trophy in their hand. This is the level at which they're performing. They have negotiated with the realms of heaven that this is what they want for their life. And they're not going to settle that they are willing to spend the rest of their life becoming that person because they've seen the picture when god opens the windows of heaven and tells you what he has for you what he sees to, and you are not claiming it people, many people are not claiming destiny why because they think destiny is just a stroll in the park <laughs> you don't know it's a marathon no and the way you finish is that your mind, number three, your mind must be passionate, must desire, you know, your, convert your desire to passion. When you see somebody passionate, you know, showing up to practice, making a ton of investments in their life, right? Getting a coach, getting a mentor, right? Going for, for events, investing here, traveling here. Passion is why people invest. So never mind this whole world. When you're telling people invest in yourself, no, don't invest in yourself. <laughs> don't, 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 don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. People who are not passionate, who are not hungry, they don't invest. They settle for whatever is easily accessible, because this level comes with sacrifices, investment of time, energy, and resources. That is a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. But anybody that says, oh, only the thing that is freely available, freely accessible, will not cost me anything. That's the only thing my heart will use to manifest. That's, that's okay. It's a decision of the heart. It's a decision of the heart. But realize that success costs what it costs. It's not about you. If there's a PhD, if there's a master's, if there's a business, right? If there's any achievement that is being presented before you, it costs what it costs. You are not the one to determine what it costs. You can determine how much you are willing to pay, how much you are willing to sacrifice, how much you are willing to sow, and to the measure you do all those things. Don't worry. 
the person, God that rewards, will reward you according to your own investment. So when people say, you invest, I'm trying to say, when I say, I'm being, when I say don't invest, I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to say, you have to invest when you want something big to happen for your life. You want to build a house and you don't want to buy cement. The bigger your dreams, the bigger the material, the bigger the investment. This is a rule that you and I did not design. You want to manifest certain things in this reality. It's tied to the effort, energy, tenacity, intentionality that you put into it. I didn't design it. But if you, if you, if you study how God's creation works, and if you study other people, you realize that this is the only way. Any other way. It's 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 um against God's will. That's why people steal, people cheat, people go into negative diabolical things. Because the straight line is you sow, the laws of sowing and reaping persist. Seed time, harvest time. God has put those promises in place and is a rewarder of those who are diligently seeking. Diligently seeking. So desire is when you open all of your heart, not small compartments. Not little, little, little. Oh, only, I can only do this. I won't do more than this. That's not desire. desire you, want a, <laughs> you, you want a spouse. You want, you want a woman in your life. And you're saying, I only pursue her if this works. Eh, you don't get to decide what winning the reward will take. Oh, you want Olympic medal, but you only practice 30 minutes a day. I'm not doing more than 30 minutes. Th 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 Ooh! People practice eight hours every day. Their full-time job for years is just for a one-minute, two-minute race. It costs what it costs. Desire. Desire must be unleashed for you to attain greatness. Greatness only comes from this dimension. It's not likes or dislikes. It's not, you know, so when I meet people, you can see the vibration. Remember I talk about vibration, the heart vibrates. When you just come close to people, you know who is on fire. You will know who is passionate. You will know who has fallen in love with their future. You fall in love with your future. You fall in love with what God has for you. Because if you don't fall in love, there are, there are, there are, there are, there are, there are forces that want you to just, this is what you fight for. The law, what you fall in love with is what you persist for, you fight for, you insist on, you invest in, you keep knocking, ask, seek, find. This is why you knock on doors. This is why you write letters. This is why you do sales. You think sales is easy? <laughs> That's it. You have to be passionate about God's assignment. And so those who are not passionate, they'll stay on the fences and they'll be waiting for a miracle. <laughs> God will do his part. He won't do your part. If Jesus is in the house and you want wine, you will still go and gather your vessels. You will still go to the stream and pour the water. The miracle that God will perform requires obedience. And it's not for you to decide how God is wanting to reward your work. The instruction is giving you, many people want shortcut. It says, do this, enroll here, do this, do this. And you're like, oh, shortcut. The mind that is trying to shortcut, that is not passionate, wants to do limited things, doesn't want to work hard, doesn't want to train itself, will be trying to short, to go around the corner against God's will. Doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way. So you have to train your mind to say, this is what I want. You want to graduate. This is the life you want. This is what you want. You have to dictate it to your mind. Say, mind though, wake up. A sleepy mind cannot do this work. A lazy mind cannot do this work. You have to awaken your spirit, your heart. Every You have to vibrate where everyone will start carrying you. You have to spend yourself to a level where God will now add on. But most people don't spend themselves in pursuit of what God is putting in front of them. Okay? And at the, so at the mind level, passion is where you go into searching mode. 
your wants, your needs. This is where you pray. That everything you need to fulfill those things, that it comes. And you look out for help. This is when you need help. People with desires and passion, they need help and they take help. And anybody that does not say, eh, I don't need help. Uh, <laughs> some people say, oh, Tony wants my money. <laughs> oh, 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 you know, this is <laughs> your future needs everything. Your future is what needs money. Your future needs time. Your future needs energy. Your future is eating up so much. Because manifestation is an energy force, right? Assignment. You want to change life. You want to change destiny. You want to go to space. Elon Musk. That's what billions of dollars are used for. Big dreams requires big money. Big time. Big people. Big intelligence. You will learn physics. You, you open your mind and learn. Because what is in your mind? Is what your mind can use to cook the food you want to eat. If there's nothing there, towards that destiny. This is why you, you invest in knowledge. You get people to teach you what you need to manifest. You don't hold back. Anybody that is still holding back, they've not tapped into this force. And the body, at the body, so mind, passion, longing, searching, right? Because now it's on an assignment to fulfill destiny. A mind must be on an assignment to fulfill destiny. That's when you jump out of your bed every day. You're not going, oh, what are we doing today? It's because you've not given your mind an assignment. A mind that has an assignment will jump up, will be like, listen, to do. We have to do this, do this, do this, this meeting, this is, we have to travel here, we have to do. A mind that is on assignment is busy, focused on manifesting destiny. And a mind that has not tapped into this will wake up and be doing so-so, strolling through life. Wasting time, procrastinating. Why? Because at the heart level, you've not awakened desire and longing and hunger. And then the body must take the right action. Number three, action, action, action. The body must act in accordance to desire. There's a conflict when people say, oh, I want to be rich. I want to do this. But their behavior, opposite. Come to class. Take these things. Get a mentor, get a coach, go for this event. The body is not acting in a way that it will build the life the heart is wanting. You see, divergent priorities. What do you want? I want to build a business. How many books have you read? Books. I don't like reading books. Ah! <laughs> You want to graduate, you don't want to do a survey, you don't want to read the book. You see, action, 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 action. How people act, how they show up must match. And so, when people are behaving in opposition to destiny, this is what we say, self-sabotage. Their behavior was action, is in opposite direction to what they say they want. That's why Jesus encountered the guy at the pool of Bethesda. Are you sure you want to be healed? Because you're not behaving like one that wants to escape this reality. Right? And at the spiritual realm, there are consequences for obedience or disobedience. You don't have control over these things. Right? God is watching. Who is obeying? Who is investing? Right? Who is doing the will of God? He knows. He says he's going through and through all over the world to show himself good to. But God has standards. <laughs> Many people want to behave like God doesn't have standards. God has serious standards. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. And that's why our job, when you have a God assignment, is to tune yourself to heaven's expectation, to remove yourself from a dimension of limitation, fear, doubt, and rise up. Your mind must go to the heights where it is tuned to where words of encouragement, nourishment, where God is telling you, keep going. This way, anointing leads to greater manifestation because there's a height of success. The flesh cannot manifest. You have to tap into the empowerment of heaven. The fourth one, and I'm wrapping, I'm wrapping up now. The heart holds values, right? 
where your treasure is that's where your heart 